What's up, everybody? It is your girl, Danya and Walls, and we are back with another Ask 15 Questions 2. And folks, listen, she is here, okay? She is, I would say, and you could DM me if you feel otherwise, the voice of the praise and worship scene for our generation, for this generation, and generations to come. We have Kimberly Joy here for Act 15 Questions to a Praise and Worship Leader. Kimberly, how are you? Thank you for all the things. How are you? Let's start there first. <laughs> Danye, I'm so happy to be here. I'm doing well. Um, this is really exciting. I'm looking forward to this conversation. We are all looking forward to this conversation. <laughs> um, so many people are, you have so many fans. Um, and that is amazing in itself. When I posted your picture to ask people what questions they had, the questions that they had was so, I'm like, wow, I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that. So I'm really excited about this conversation for you to let us know about this world of praise and worship leading and the lifestyle of praise and worship leading, because it's, it's more than just, you know, getting on stage and just singing a good song. So I'm really excited about this. So we're going to jump right in. Question number one, the question everyone hates. Tell us about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely is the question that everyone hates. Um, feels weird talking about yourself. But uh, my name is Kimberly Joy. I am a worship leader from uh, the Connecticut area, Connecticut, New England area. Um, I lead worship um, all over and I'm a gospel recording artist. Um, you mentioned before we got on here that um some people might know me from the Terrell show I sang there um on the blue all uh I was on the voice back in 2018 um I'm also a songwriter and I'm a part of a wonderful collective called the huddle worship um and we have some new music coming out so that's pretty awesome and I also have um right actually right now we have the song called waiting for me that's out so you should check that out also I personally have some music out my brand new single adoration which is a beautiful worship song is out right now. So um, that's me. I feel like I'm rambling. So that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, it is perfect. And we are going to have links and access to all the things that Kimberly talks about down in the description. I don't know if y'all heard that, but Kimberly said she was on the blue wall, y'all. And now I don't have the wall that she's on. Just to ask 15 questions. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm gonna put the link to that episode because Kimberly killed on that episode I don't think people realize how hard it really is to do that show because when you're home I'm one of those people I'm like oh god why don't we just sing this song but I know once you get there it's like <laughs> complete blank drawn yeah, yeah. um but okay this was one of the top three questions that was asked question number two what is a praise and worship leader exactly yeah, um, it's all in the name. A praise and worship leader is the one who is tasked to lead um, the congregation, the people in praise and worship. Now, what is that? It's, it's describing worth to God, you know, and so the job of the praise and worship leader is to guide the people to a place where they are ready to receive from God and to hear from God. Um, yeah, that's what a praise and worship leader is. And that is so important. Um... I think, I'm not going to remember, but I am going to say this part. I think the trouble that we see, especially in our generation now, is that that main component about that responsibility that praise and worship leaders have, and that it's more than just picking a song and getting up there and singing it, that you are tasked with a job. Yeah. And we are missing that point. And I'm so glad that Kimberly here, she's here to put us all in check, okay? That is why she, she didn't know she was here for that, but that <laughs> is what I am tasking her with today because it is so important that we don't miss out on this Levitical calling yeah. that we have. If you say that you are a praise and worship leader and you may sing good, but that does not mean that you are a praise and worship leader. Mm -hmm. I won't say nothing else. Okay, Question number three. I'm passionate about this topic, so I ain't going to ramble on. Here we go. Question number three. How did you get started singing? 
Wow. Well, um, my mother says I've been singing since I could talk. Um, my mother um, was our church's um, music director. She played the keys. She directed the choir. Um, and she also directed gospel choirs at local schools as after school program. So wherever she went, I went. Matter of fact, then her and my father were both so into music. And so they would take me to concerts, they said, in my little baby bassinet when I was a child. So music was in me. And my whole family is musical. Um, like my brother is an orchestral conductor. My sister does musical theater. Both of my parents sing. My grandparents on both sides sang. Like my grandmother, wow. my, my dad's mom will never let me forget. She's like, you know, I was an opera singer. So that's where you got it from. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been singing my whole life and the music in general has been a part of my entire life but I grew up singing I'm um, like a lot of people I grew up singing in the church um my parents are also pastors so I grew up singing um in that church and that's where my love for music and love for worship and love for God um, really was birthed that's where the seed was planted wow yes and we're going to talk more about family and family dynamic I'm assuming one of the followers that asked the question that will come up about your family must know that your family, you're heavy in ministry. Um, Cause I mm-hmm. thought that this quite, it doesn't come so later guys. So be patient. Um, but I'm excited to hear about that. Okay. Question number four, how long have you been leading worship? Wow. I've been leading worship for a while now. Um, I will say it's probably been, let me see probably somewhere around 10 years, I want to say, at least 10 years. I mean, it might be a little longer. Um, yeah, I've been leading worship for about 10 years. I'm first at my parents' church, um, and now I lead um, worship. I get to lead worship at various churches. I'm here and there. I get to travel and do that. So, yeah, but it's been about a decade. It's, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't wow. think about that, right? Yeah. Okay, this is a tag-along question because I'm very interested to know. So mm-hmm. starting off in your parents' church, did you then know the responsibility or like the importance of the role of the praise and worship leader? Or was it just like, I'm just singing? Oh, I was totally just singing. I was totally just singing. Now, (laughs) I definitely had a heart for God and a heart for worship, but I didn't realize where heart and responsibility came in, where they met, you know what I mean? Um, because yeah, a lot of people have a heart for worship and, th- and there's nothing wrong with it. That's where it should start, right? right. But um, the responsibility portion came on um, a little later because you realize that you're about as responsible as the pastor that, or the preacher that's gonna be speaking the word, right? Um, and so um, the responsibility portion came a little later with some maturity and really to get to know what my task was. But um, I started out um, just singing and trying to get the people to, you know, get in the <laughs> spirit and get on board. Um, that was difficult for a while. But um, yeah, once I figured out what that responsibility was, uh, it became natural. Wow. Wow. That's so listen, you can start off somewhere, but mm-hmm. definitely do not stay there. Right. Do not stay in that same space. Like you start off with the passion and the heart just to sing but dive deeper, delve deeper into the word and see what the Levite's responsibility was Absolutely. grow in that. Because listen, it ain't easy out here being a praise and worship leader. No, you got to equip yourself as well. Um, okay. All right. Um, question number five. This question is so interesting and I will, I'm so excited to hear your answer because when I saw it, I'm like, that's a good question. Question number five. How is praise and worship different from devotional back in the day? Hmm. There are like two key differences and they're really not that drastic, right? So um, devotion back in the day for um, people who might not have grown up in like a traditional church, like maybe Baptist or Pentecostal or something like that. Um, so devotional was usually like a deacon or somebody would get up before service. Um, there'd be some prayer, there'd be some testimonies and they would sing a song. Um, my granddad um, in the Baptist church was um, the guy who would get up and line some hymns and he'd be like, I love the Lord, he heard my cry. And the church would be like, I love the Lord. You know what I'm saying? All of that. Um, so devotional, um, first it's a different feel, right? Um, it's a little more, I want to say, 
horizontally centered. It, devotional is rooted in testimony. Devotional is rooted in testimony. Um, and so yes, like worship is a time to prepare your heart, your spirit to hear from God, right? And in praise can be testimony as well. Um, but devotional is, is very much rooted in testimony and what the Lord has done for you. Um, and so um, I think devotional, it was the original precursor to praise and worship. Um, we wouldn't have praise and worship if we didn't have that. And I think there's something very um, much to be said for devotional. Um, I'll say a lot of the hymns of the church were sung during devotional. We don't really even have a space in our services these days to sing those hymns. Um, I try every now and then to throw one in on the end of a worship song because they're so powerful. Um, but yeah, that's what devotional um, would do. And so um, it was a time for encouragement. It was a time for testimony. It was a time for you to think about the goodness of God. You know what I mean? And so it's, it's very important, but praise and worship, um, again, like I said before, worship is ascribing worth to God. Uh, it's more of a vertical situation. So devotional is horizontal. You know, what God has done for us, how we got over, how we made it through with the help of God. And praise and worship is ascribing that all to God. It's like, God, because you are great, because you are strong, because you are mighty, that's why we give you the glory. And that's why you're worthy of our worship. That's why you're worthy of our praise. And so they both have a place um, in the liturgical setting. They both have a place in the church, um, but they have two slightly different functions, but they're both very important, I think. What happened? Look at that. That's because I was giving you credit. I called you Professor Joy. And <laughs> I said, come on, Professor Joy with the... Come on. I, I think, um, comment down below if you guys think Kimberly should do a uh, worship workshop. I'm just saying, I'm there just going to. one coming in the works. So oh, we'll, we'll talk about look that. Look at we'll that. About. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Horizontal, vertical, but both vitally important. We're not saying do away with one. Both of them are. Vi and I love that you said, like, even during your worship, um, that you try to incorporate the hymns because. Oh, it is like, they're like rich chocolate cake. I probably should not equate him to food, but <laughs> so guys, see, everybody could get the visual, but it is, it's really like, it's so, it's, it's so much. And I think it took me years to really be able to understand, like, it is well with my soul. Like, oh. what? <laughs> you know what? If we're going to prepare, if we're going to compare, I'm sorry, hymns to food, I would call hymns, not go, go with me, a, a nice, a nicely prepared bone broth. Now, if you're ever trying to make a soup or a stew, right, you need the base. It's the foundation. It's the flavor, right? Because everything, you're going to put things in it to add to it. But if you don't have that foundation, it's not going to, it's not going to really and, taste all that good. Yeah. And I think that's important. Listen, if you are formally in the chorus, definitely include the hymns. Now, I'm not saying I know all of them because there are so many <laughs> and they got <laughs> thousands of verses. I said, uh, So Will I is like the modern day hymn. It's so Absolutely. many verses, <laughs> so many verses. It but I, it took me years to really realize like when my, my grandparents would walk around the house singing, it is well with my soul. Mm -hmm. Like not knowing of the things that they were enduring, maybe the pain or thoughts in their mind. Like that song brought me over, right? Mm. Like, oh my God, great is thy faithfulness. Like yes. these things are, if you don't know these things, know them, learn to love them. They are important. You don't need to do away with them. Okay. Great answer, Joy. Great answer. I'm calling you Joy. <laughs> great right, answer, right. Kim. Great answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Question number six. What type of work do you do currently? Because I know... People see praise and worship leaders and it's like, okay, well, what do you do? Like, yeah. what do you do do? Um, so what do you, what type of work do you do currently? So I am currently full-time in music and ministry. God is good. Yes. This <laughs> is what is she good. do do. This, this is what I do do. <laughs> so I'm full-time in, I'm, I'm in music and ministry. I have been since, oh my goodness, since 2018, I'll say 2007, 2018. Um, God has been good. I mean, it, it has been a struggle at times, but God has kept me. Um, yeah, so that's what I do. Um, like I said, I travel a lot, leading worship at different churches or um, singing, being a guest psalmist or a guest, you know, artist. 
do a lot of recording. I do vocal arranging. I do vocal coaching, like all kinds of stuff. So um, anything with music or ministry, I'm doing it. Um, and so that's what I do day to day. Oh, wow. yeah. that is amazing. Wow. So God be all the glory for that. Yeah, um, question number seven. How? No. Okay. Let's, we, we not heard that the parents are pastors. So that's why this question now is a lot more interesting. How would your family feel about you singing something other than gospel? Yeah. So I'm grateful to God for my family. Um, they, the word says train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they won't depart from it. Um, they really instilled so much in me. They instilled the Holy Ghost in me. Right. Um, and so, um, because of that foundation, um, when I've had opportunity to go out into the world, and when I say the world, I mean the secular realm, um, I um, had the covering that I needed to be able to do it. Um, and so to answer your question, they don't mind. To be honest, like I said, I came from a musical th- family. So even though they were pastors, I was exposed to all kinds of music because they loved all kinds of music. And my parents always taught me that, you know, music belongs to the Lord. Music belongs to the Lord. And yeah, what we sing in church, we're giving it back to God. But how, who am I to say that, that the sound that the saxophone makes on a jazz record is, is, is the devil's music? Mm-hmm. You know, God created that sound. Mm-hmm. And so it belongs to him. You know what I mean? It's like, as long as, long as there's nothing really like that's explicitly glorifying the um, enemy of the kingdom of darkness, you know, they're like, go for it. So I listened to jazz growing up. I listened to classical music. I listened to Whitney Houston. I listened to Tony Braxton. They, this is what they played in my house. Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> yes. You know, like that's what they played in my house. And so um, as far as me listening to other music and, and when I was on The Voice, I had to sing secular music. Um, before I was on The Voice, I was a background singer with the rapper Childish Gambino, singing for a living secular music. Um, and so um, they didn't really have an issue with that. They were just like, you know, you know who you are, you know um, um, what, what your foundation is. And as long as you don't lose that, and as long as you're very careful and prayerful about what you do, it's totally fine. And I found that even through singing secular music, I've been able to be a light. And, and a witness you know I'm glad that what I do is gospel because that's just where my heart is um worship is my heart and so that's why I'm glad that's what I decided to sing um but yeah secular music everything belongs to God the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof right the world <laughs> and they that dwell therein so it belongs to God yes Ooh. Listen, you actually answered, um, I was going to do a tag along question but you talked about like just your choice at the towards the end of choosing to do worship and gospel because that's where your heart is. And I think that is so amazing. And that, um, again, I called you the voice of our generation, um, wow. but also the light of our generation because so many people feel like they can't follow their heart because that's not where the money is, mm-hmm. right? Um, I hear that all the time. So most people, they'll steer away from doing gospel or doing um, worship because it's about the money. And it's like, no, if your heart is truly there, allow God to take care of you. Allow God to cover you and and provide for you as he is our Jehovah Jireh. Allow him to provide for you and do what he has called you to do. Absolutely. (laughs) God always provides. God always provides. And yeah, doing gospel music, I do not expect to become rich and famous. I do not. Now, God has blessed me to have a platform, and I thank him for that. Um, but no, I don't expect to be rich and famous, but I, I know that I'll be taken care of because God got me back. I think of it like um, the, the widow woman that the prophet um, Elijah went to see, and she was, she was dying, and it was a famine in the land, and all <laughs> she had was a little bit of meal, and she said, the prophet was like, make me a cake, and she was like, well, all we have is this and I was gonna make a cake for me and my son and we were gonna eat and we we're gonna die. And he's like, okay, well make me one first. And because of her obedience to what the man of God had said, because of her obedience, every time she went back to the barrel, there was enough. Yeah. And that's and that's what I think about 
And I think of God as Jehovah Jireh, right? He already knows that you're going to need something and he provides. And yes, sometimes he provides and the, the blessing is to overflow. But most of the time, when I how I really seen God move in my life as far as provision is whenever I need it, it's there. Yes, yes. Come, Pastor, J- Pastor Kim <laughs> is here. <laughs> Get your offerings ready. No, seriously. And, and I think, oh, I can go on, but I will not. Um, yes, he is a provider. I will say that. I know God to do that. And I have mm-hmm. through the year called 2020, mm. the Lord did so many things. Yes. You know, so many things. And, and there was a lot that happened, but I saw God in a whole new way. And mm. I knew him as a provider already. But I, I, I was able to better understand the characteristics of God throughout mm. that year, and that is vitally important to me. Like you know, you and you get in a new relationship. When me and my husband was just talking, you know, you want to know all the things about the people. Praise God, and we don't take that time out with God. And for me, mm. twenty twenty was that God and I dated all over again, wow. and I got to know his different characteristics. So him as a provider, I got to know the depth of his provision. And it looked like more than just money. It looked Mm. like peace of mind. It looked like the calm in the storm. It looks like, uh, okay, I'm done. But yeah, that's good. That's (laughs) good. God as a provider. And you said something so poignant. And I know this is not the topic, (laughs) but you said something so poignant about that. Because I have a testimony about 2020. Come on. But you said something so poignant. You said you've got to see God in a different way. In 2020, we were all talking about the beginning of the year before we knew the pandemic was going to happen. Oh, the year of perfect vision. God is going to open our eyes. And he did. He sure did. He ain't doing it the way you thought you wanted Mm -mm. him to do it, but he Mm -mm. did. (laughs) But he sure did. And he gave us a chance to see him, right, in a different way, to experience him in a different way. And so he really did open our eyes to his, the the magnitude of his goodness and his greatness. And um, like I said about God being a provider and it always being enough. In 2020, everything shut down. And this is my job. This is my job. So the churches are shut down. I can't lead worship. The venues are shut down. I can't travel. You know what I mean? But um, I had just, I had like bought a whole bunch of equipment and been gifted a whole bunch of equipment for a studio. And I never really set it up. Like every now and then I had a project. So I put it up and then take it down because I didn't just want to have like a spot dedicated (laughs) to that. And my house is kind of cluttery. And then one day I was just looking at all this stuff and God was like, set it up again and leave it up. And I was like, okay. I mean, I don't know why. Maybe, okay. I was like, well, maybe I need to like start writing some more songs. Okay. I'll put it up. And um, I put up this stuff and the next day I got a call. They said, Hey, you know, um, somebody um, referred me to you and I'd like you to help me um, with our church's virtual choir, a a really large church with well-known pastor. I'm not going to name drop, but a very large church with a well-known pastor asked me and I started doing their virtual choirs and arranging vocals and even writing songs for them. And that sustained me during the pandemic. Wow. See that then? sustained me during the pandemic. And see, God, it's, if I hadn't been obedient, I wouldn't have been ready. I'd been running around trying to get it together. But because wow. I, that small thing. And so God, I'm not here to preach. <laughs> <laughs> she already did. Don't preach and say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to preach. But it's something about being in the right position. And that goes back to the responsibility of the worship leader. But I know you got more questions. So, well, no, listen, go on here. I told you, I (laughs) I told you, I can't put no time limit on it because when we go, we go. But yes, 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 I'm telling you, yes to all those things. We saw God, we saw people. So it was a year of vision. And hopefully everyone's eyes are now yet open yet again. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Okay. Question number eight. I know some, but I would love to hear from the Connecticut area standpoint this question. What are five misconceptions about worship leaders or leading worship in general? Mm. Um, One um, misconception about leading worship, I'll say in general, is um, in song choice, that praise is a fast song and worship is a slow song. 
that that's not <laughs> that's not a thing now i do believe that you should switch up the tempo in um your you know your your set list or whatever and in your worship set just to keep to help keep the momentum going or you know make sure there's not like, too many highs or too many lows you know right. but no no it doesn't matter it's, it's about it's about the lyrics of the song more so um than the tempo so yeah all fast songs aren't praise songs also songs aren't worship songs um that's one misconception i'm um, about worship leading um, um you said five so um another misconception about worship leaders is that another misconception about worship leaders is that we're all very charismatic people that's not the truth um, I can't tell you how many times I've practiced what I'm going to say between songs before Sunday morning. Because, and I learned that from um, <laughs> Rick Pino. He said he used to, like when he first started worship leading, he used to practice what he was going to say between songs, practice those, those transitions. Absolutely, you should. If preachers can study and have notes okay. for their sermons, then I need to Align practice. Align the transitions. scriptures with the songs. That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> yeah. it. That is it. Um, okay. Another misconception is that the worship leader's only role is to make sure there's music for the service. That is not so. Um, you um, um, mentioned it earlier, the Levitical priesthood, right? The, 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 the job biblically of the Levites, you can look it up, was for them to make sure that there was order in the service and they took care of the house of God. Um, and then, then, then it was their um, it was their responsibility to carry the Ark of the Covenant, to move the Ark of the Covenant, to take care of the Ark of the Covenant, which um represented or was the embodiment of the presence of God. Um, so that that's three things. So order of the service, I'm making sure the church is taken care of, the actual physical building and the emblems, and then the third thing is the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And so um yeah it's it's more than just singing songs yeah it's more than just singing songs it's more than having the dopest set list or singing the, 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 the latest greatest hit from maverick city right it's about it's about setting order we talked about a um, devotion earlier and, and praise and worship and how you were supposed to get people into the, the 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 presence right but setting order also means that we're um we need to stay within our time constraints that are given Setting order means don't get so caught up in your worship that the service isn't moving along mm -hmm. because it's not a concert. They didn't come to see you, you know? And, and it's nothing wrong with taking time for God to move. When God moves, God is a God of order. So even if it takes longer, um, you know, you'll, you'll have the freedom and you'll look, you look over to your pastor and you see, okay, you have the freedom to go. And if somebody is standing there waiting to move on, you move on because it's your job to set the tone and set that order. Anything out of order is anti-Christ. That's what the word says. It's our job. That goes back <laughs> to that responsibility. Yes. It, back to that. it needs to be in order. It needs to be in order. Okay, I think that was only three misconceptions. That was three, so, yes. Okay, so there's two more. Um, <laughs> let me see. Um, yeah, I said that we're not charismatic. We need to set order, blah, blah, blah. All right, four. A fourth misconception about worship leaders is something new. And I'd like to speak to this because um, the conversation, it needs to be had, but I think it's being talked about um, in the wrong light. And I'll, I'll say it like this. I'm fumbling over my words, so I'll figure out how to say it. Um, one of the misconceptions is I'm a worship leader that is skilled at what they do is just doing it for show. The word calls us to be skilled minstrels. That's what the word says, to play skillfully. And so just because somebody is really good at what they do, does not mean that God is not in it. It doesn't mean that God can't flow through it. What am I saying? Yes, we want all of our worship teams to sound good. But um, I'll say um, we have this misconception that the churches with lights and the churches with fog machines and the churches who have the, the big singers that can do all the runs are doing it for show. And that's a huge misconception. Yes, there are people who are doing it for show, but it's about heart posture, not about technology and not about skill. Wow. And that's the difference, right? There's nothing 
there's nothing demonic about being good at what you do. That's what God calls us to be. Yes, we give our best for the Lord. Should <laughs> listen if we have the budget. If, I wish every church had the budget to put on productions like Elevation does, or like I, I love seeing um, uh, the church in Maryland, Faith City, mm. a spirit of faith church, Faith yeah. City music. I love to see what they do, I love to see the level of production, but I also love to see the anointing that's still there, right? Doesn't just because they have all of this and can do all of this and can take time doesn't mean they're not anointed. And so I want us to be very careful when we talk about, um, you know, people doing things for show, because absolutely there are people that are doing things for show. Absolutely. But I don't, let us not um, mistake excellence. Yes. For arrogance. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was four. <laughs> <laughs> and um, a fifth men's misconception um, about worship is that only, only little moments of like spontane spontaneity are prophetic, mm. right? Um, that, that's become really popular lately. Um, I think, I wanna say um, Bethel, the, the church Bethel in California um, kind of brought that to the forefront, the spontaneous worship moments where it's, oh my gosh, you're hearing from God. And I think Miranda Curtis does this a lot. She does it really well. Oh my gosh, you're hearing from God. And here's a melody that the Lord spoke. And this is what God is saying in this moment. And those are, pro those can be prophetic moments, but those aren't the only time. Oh, yeah. um, you're, the way you put up your set list should be prophetic. It should be prophetic. You should be listening to what God is saying because that's what prophets do. They speak what God is saying into an atmosphere. That's what they do. That's what they're called to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, it's, it's, yeah. it's, and, that, and that's definitely a part of um, our role as a worship leader we need to be in position so like even when we're putting together our set list it's prophetic um, and, and, and prophecy is not just some mystical thing oh God dropped something in my heart oh I know where you live I know your address just by looking right. at you no, no 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 I know that you have a green book on your nightstand and every night you wake up and read that no no no, no. that's not just what <laughs> prophecy is right prophecy is not just oh I, I prophesy that you're going to get the money no 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 prophecy like I said is speaking what God says and what God says a lot of what God says is in his word that's it so and if so, you're singing God's word then you are singing prophetically absolutely it's not only what he says but it's what he said and that's yep. where we mess up that is because his word lives yes <laughs> his word is alive Very his true. word is alive yeah, yeah so um so yeah don't don't you know prof i do it all the time you know songs that come drop in from heaven and you know you know and even sometimes like god will speak a word to me in that moment and i'll speak it absolutely but that's not the only moment that's prophetic worship. You need to make sure that your set lists are operating in that prophetic space. And the way I know that I'm in order is when what we decided to sing lines up with what the word is. Yes. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Yes. Yes. That is very true. Very, 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 very true. Um, and also for those that are in the congregation, what that means is don't wait for the pastor to get up there and to call your name. Because the Lord could be speaking to you mm. through praise and worship. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for the man or woman of God to speak to you directly because you feel like that is the only form of prophecy. Don't miss what the Lord is saying to you. There is correction and alignment in the songs. Yeah. <laughs> there is. He doesn't just, he want to sing over you, but correct you at the same time. He mm -hmm. wants to align you. He wants to do that. So, yeah, come on. I can't wait for this worship conference thing. <laughs> okay, question number nine. Recall an amazing encounter you had at a worship service. What happened and how did you feel? Mm, an amazing encounter. Um, yeah, so for years, um, I sang, and I still do, I'm still part of the family, um, with J.J. Harris and the Youthful Praise for about 10 years wow it's, it's been a long time oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still a part of the family um even though I don't get to you know come around as much um because of my own stuff but um I'll say I want to say three or four years ago um we were privileged to go to the Dominican Republic um to lead worship there 
And um, it was for a profit at conference from, uh, for a profit from Nigeria, I wanna say, and I cannot remember his name. I cannot remember his name, but we saw miracles that night. And um, when we got up there to sing in the Dominican Republic, and the language is Spanish, for those who don't know. And so we get there and because of where I am, I've gotten the chance to lead worship at a lot of um, Spanish speaking churches. Um, I don't really speak the language all that well, but I can sing the heck out of it. <laughs> 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 so um, we're singing, um, you deserve it. You deserve it. And JJ points to me and he said, hey, you sing in Spanish, right? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, so I want you to lead. We're in a stadium. I think it's a football or soccer stadium. Um, seats about 50,000 people. And I want to say they were at least 60 or 70 there because they were in the stadium seats. There were extra seats put down on the ground. There are people that climbed up the walls just to hear because it was, um, it was, a, it was an important um, event because he was coming and doing healing. Mm. And a lot of them don't have access to um, medical, um, you know, um, the medicine and things like that, like yeah. we do. Um, so I remember get up, up there and singing You Deserve It in Spanish. And... It was a beautiful moment, not just because like the crowd erupted when they heard it in their language, but because of that connect, because we knew what we were singing and they knew what we were singing, this connection and worship happened where it was like, I could just feel the presence of God because people in there were expectant. They were ready. They were looking for a move of God. And so to, to be in a place with 50 plus thousand people singing to the Lord and in worshiping and crying out to God, that was the most beautiful and one of the most poignant moments um, that I've ever experienced. I can only, service. I can only imagine. Mm. And it, you, you said a word that I think is, um, I'm gonna say taboo. Inbox me if you don't like the word uh, expectancy. Mm. It is very rare that we see that in our American Western Christianity. Mm -hmm. And it's, I hear William McDowell oftentimes talks about his encounters in Africa um, and, and how like they see like literal, like demonic things and people trying to attack them and people being healed and all of this stuff. Yeah. And that is the expectancy. Like people come wanting, like the woman with the issue of blood wasn't just like, she was tired. She she knew that if I, all I need to do is the hint, it's this little fuzzy thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At the I end. Could, if See, I could just get that. And that's <laughs> so good because when she touched him, Jesus said, who touched me? And they're like, wait a minute. His disciples are like, wait a minute. Everybody's touching you. Everybody's pushing up against you, trying to get to you, but it trying to get your attention. But it was because he said, <gasps> your faith has made you whole. He didn't say you touching me made you whole. He said, nope. your faith made you whole. It was the expectancy. Um, who says it? Um, I know Israel put this in the song and I, I can't remember what preacher said this, um, but the pastor of a church that I leave worship at um, mm -hmm. often said this just past this past Sunday. He said, the atmosphere of expectation or expectation is mm -hmm. the breeding ground for the miraculous to happen. I believe That's how that. Israel says it. The atmosphere of expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. I believe it. It is. It is. By faith, I believe by faith. Yes. it. Yes. When the Bible talks about signs and wonders following those that believe, Mm -hmm. it's more than me just going I believe because it's easy for me to say it but do we really believe do do we really believe that God can heal do we really believe that God can deliver we it is it is so rare we believe he can <laughs> we believe he can but do we believe he will mm -hmm. and that's the difference between belief and expectation right that belief is, is knowing expectancy is waiting for it to happen mm -hmm. no matter how long it takes no matter how long. <laughs> oh man, uh, Kim is up here preaching, y'all. I I didn't call her to preach, but that's that it's in her. You can't hide it. Okay. <laughs> Question number ten: How important is it for you to have a relationship with God 
in order to do what you do? It's it's all there is. It's all there is. I couldn't do what I did without a relationship with God. And having a relationship with God doesn't mean I'm not going to make mistakes. You know, having a relationship with God, it doesn't mean that I'm going to have to, I'm not, you know, ever going to mess up. And I'm not going to have to come back to him and repent because I repent every day because I always find a way to mess something up because okay. I'm human. You know, Paul said die daily. Okay. I, I daily. Take it to it, all right. I'm getting up killing stuff. Crucify. <laughs> crucify this flesh daily because the flesh will have you doing some jacked up stuff you know what I mean even your thoughts are jacked up and so (laughs) and so you've got to have this relationship with God but that's what a relationship is right if you have a relationship with God you know you know what I can come to you Mm -hmm. if I mess up I can come to you if I make a mistake that's what a relationship is Mm -hmm. um and so having a relationship with God is so important um and then in order to lead people to God we need to know where he is Mm -hmm. We need to know where he is and we know, need to know what he likes. Um, there's a scripture in the Bible and I, I really should have taken some notes and like written down all these scriptures. <laughs> um, but there's, a, there's a passage in the Bible um, where it talks about Aaron's sons and how they were um, in charge of the priesthood and they were supposed to be um, putting together the um, burnt um, incense offering for the Lord but they skip some steps mm. and they added in some stuff that God didn't ask them to do. And they lifted up a strange fire. They said a strange fire to him, a strange scent and he destroyed it. Mm. Now I'm <laughs> grateful that we live in the dispensation of grace. Okay. Because God. some of us got Strange fires. God, I All kinds of strange fires. Little fires everywhere. My gosh. <laughs> but. <laughs> God, thank you. Oh, my goodness. But like, this is, like um, who has this song? Travis Green, let my worship rise like a sweet perfume. Right? We got to know what God likes. And the only way you know somebody likes is if you have a relationship with them. You said you're married. You know what your husband likes because you have relationship with him but guess what even in that there is a daily work to continue to learn him that's exactly it it's still a daily daily work yeah it's daily and it's the same thing with god like Mm -hmm. what worked for you last year in ministry in worship listen people shifted in 2020 what worked for you in 2019 did not work or could not work for you in 2020. Mm-hmm. So many ministries um, had to revamp everything. They never did online worship. They, they never did anything virtual. So you have a remnant of people that's searching and looking, not only those in the church, but those who never stepped foot in was trying to seek God because it was unknown territory. Yep. We yep. have to learn God all over we have to learn him every single day because we're just when we think we know him there's something else that we need to dive deeper into (laughs) there's something else there's something else is a different side of god there's something that we need to know we need to know him deeper we need to know him in a better way um and and you can live a whole lifetime and not understand the fullness of who god is because that's how vast that's how big he is and so daily daily i'm in the word of god and yeah sometimes i miss some days because life (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but my desire, right, yes. is to daily be in the word of God to seek him more. Some days it's just waking up and looking at the scripture of the day. Some days it's a two hour long prayer and devotion session because I really need to seek God. Yes. But it, it, it requires you to daily, daily be in that, that word, daily be praying, daily taking the steps to, to be in relationship with God, because that's the only way you can lead people to where he is. You've got to hear from him. Lead people to where he is and lead them to where they need to be to receive what he has for them. Yes. Right. The reason why Moses was able to lead the people through the wilderness so well is because he took time to go and and, and work on his relationship and spend time with God. Yes. And the reason he didn't get to enter into the promise with him was because he stepped out of that that space, that obedient space. Mm -hmm. 
and did something God didn't tell them to do. And listen, y'all, if you ain't read the Bible, this is a common trend throughout this here thing. So moral of <laughs> the story is, be obedient. Be so obedient. People got demoted <laughs> because of disobedience. People have been stricken because of disobedience. You know, like, we just don't be obedient. Be obedient, and people have been blessed by obedience. Yes, and be yes. and that's the other thing about. <laughs> I, I said I'm not here to preach, but that's the other <laughs> thing. It's just in me. It's just in me. That's yes. the other thing about being obedient and 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 going daily to God, right? Because okay, this is it, and then we're gonna move on. <laughs> so the reason Moses didn't go into into the promised land is because God God had told him to speak to the rock. So there would be water. They need the water. Speak to the rock and water will flow out of it. Moses hit the rock. He struck the rock. And, and water still came out. But God was like, you were disobedient. I can't take you into the next. <laughs> I can't take you into the next realm. I can't take you into the promise because you were disobedient. In anger, he struck the rock. And what's crazy is Moses could have been thinking, well, God, and earlier in the, in, in the book, God told him to strike the rock. Right. Oh, come but that on, was Kim. the word for the previous season. That wasn't the word for this season. The word for the previous season was strike the rock. Oh the my word gosh. for the, y'all need to read Exodus. This is real good. Okay. The word for the pre, previous season was strike the rock. And he was obedient and the water came out. The word for this season, his current season, was speak to the rock. And yeah, he struck the rock and water still came out. But because he operated in disobedience, and not just disobedience, but operated in the word that was from last season. How can you hear what God is saying right now if you don't spend time with him? The word for last season worked for last season, but the word for this last season is not sufficient for this season. It's not. And that's it's not. That is also another problem because when God does speak different, a lot of us are so stubborn and stuck in our ways. It's like, well, God did it this way last time. But he's not, he's not, he's not doing that this time. Mm-mm. That that is not <laughs> that's that's not that's not where it's at. But for the sake of the people, he allowed the water to flow. And just because you still see the miracle take place, does not mean you were were obedient. Mm-hmm. So now, when you don't see the fruits of your labor, or you don't see things manifest the way they're supposed to, it's like, well, God, I did what you said, and you blessed. And you showed up. God was like, not for you. <laughs> for my no. people, I did, I did that. He said, he said, I did that because I'm good, not because you did the right thing. Right. <laughs> That's one of the greatest yet scariest messages ever, that God is mm-hmm. good. Because it helps me, I, and it lets me identify also that I am not. See? That's the realest thing you could ever say. God is good, but I am not. I am not. <laughs> I am not. That's it. Oh, Kim got, she is up here. Okay, all right. <laughs> Question number eleven. I think you kind of touched on this one already. Uh, but question number eleven was or is, uh, what do you find difficult about your role and responsibility as a prayer leader? Yeah. So the biz- the biggest difficulty has nothing to do with God, and it has everything to do with leading people. That's it. <laughs> Um, and not just, I'm not even talking about the congregation on Sunday morning. I'm talking about the people in your team. Um, it's difficult to be responsible for all those people. You're not just responsible for teaching them songs. And that even in itself, getting songs together, getting rehearsals together. That's a lot of work. Yeah, that's, a difficult part together. Of that's a difficult part of saying somebody can't make it today. Oh, I can't find childcare. I can't do the, 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 the X, Y, and Z. You got 15 different people. to do. It's a lot. It's a lot. So that's tough. But then also as a worship leader, especially if you're in charge, I'm a worship, I'm worship pastor at my church. And so I need to make sure spiritually that we're all on one accord and in the right place. I need to make sure from the singers to the musicians, and a lot of churches don't care about the musicians as long as they play well. Okay. They don't care about the singers as long as they sing well. And meanwhile, we're all going to hell in a handbasket. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's a responsibility if you're in charge if you're leading worship your responsibility even if you only lead worship once a month your responsibility for that time when you lead worship is to make sure everybody is in on one accord or with one yes. accord 
so the spirit can move. And so that that's the hardest part of the responsibility. I got to get myself in check so I can get everybody else in check. Uh, and just dealing with people in general. It's just, and I can mm-hmm. only imagine because, you know, then you have the spirit of offense that is like the pinnacle of human nature. Ev- everybody's offense. Ev- yeah. Everybody. And it's just like, oh, I, j- I, it's, I know think I'm better than you are. I just, mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, we, I can righteously judge. That is, that, that is biblical as your brother, sister in Christ. Like that is our responsibility. We have the right to do that the same way you have the right to also correct me. And I love that the ministry you're a part of takes so much um, precedence or care about that. Because like you said, a lot of churches do not. And what happens is we allow people to get up there and we worship and they're bleeding out on the and then when we don't see the change in the house, then we wonder why. Music oh is sacred. Is. Music is our intimacy with God. I'm not going to get on this topic, but this is why, you know, with some music ministry stuff, we've got some perversion things that go on because we are in an intimate space with God. And if not taken care of, it will be tainted. It will be. Cannot do that. Just have people up there just bleeding out because they sound good. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, thank you. Because then somebody got to clean that blood up. And who is it going to be? No. Exactly. No, 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 no. Okay. Question number 12. Uh, What are your top five? I don't know what it is about five. What is your top five? favorite worship songs or your top five worship songs oh my goodness that is <laughs> tough that is tough um wow my top five worship songs I'm not even going to say these are my top five but these are the five that come to mind right now yeah. because this could change um let's see um a worship song that I love and will forever love is um you are good by Israel and New Breed okay Lord, you oh, are good. Oh, I was going to say the fast one. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Um, because I feel like that was like, that's what introduced praise and worship to the Black church. That really is. And it's so well written. And there's so many things about it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of them. Um, another one of my favorite worship songs is Defender. Um, I believe um, Jesus Culture sings it but I'm trying to remember the name Rita Springer wrote it. Okay. It's called Defender. Um, Beautiful song, beautiful song. You should check it out if you don't know it. Um, I love Promises by Maverick City. Love that song. It does never get old. (laughs) It never misses. Never, never. No matter when you play it, it never misses. Never. And there, there's so many, there's so many songs and there, there's so many songs. Um, Like now I feel like I'm in a holy because I don't even know where else to go. That was three, I think. Yeah. Um, um, another song that I love. Worship song that I love. Mm. It's. It's coming to me. <laughs> How many songs? Okay. Everlasting God, William Murphy sings it. Okay. Um, we said our hope on you. We said oh, our okay, hope okay, on you. yes, 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 yes. It was the everlasting God. Yes. There's so <laughs> many worship songs, and I love <laughs> "Heart of Worship" by Matt Redman. I'm coming back to the heart. Oh, um, okay, okay. There, there's so many songs that there's so many Christian songs that I didn't say. Um, there's a okay, so who, so that who was are terrible some artists? <laughs> who are some artists that you would name? There we go. There we, we go. That that, that, that's easier. <laughs> so um, I love, I love Maverick City. I love okay. what they're doing. That's, an, um, that's one of the newer artists. My yeah. top, my favorite worshiper, favorite artist is Israel. And that's just. Really? Okay. Really. Yes. I love Israel too. Yeah. My top one. So many songs. So, so much, so much good there. Um, <laughs> 
I I love Carrie Job. Carrie Job. The um, Garden album. By far one of my favorites. So good. Um, okay. Elevation Worship. Elevation Worship okay. is really great. Um, that was four. And um, five. I want to throw a girl in there. Well, I said Carrie. But um, I'm going to say Tasha Cobbs Leonard. I really appreciate what she's doing for the kingdom. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So the, the follower actually said that I had to do the same thing. So I'm going to do artists because that's also very easy for me. Mm -hmm. um, I love Stephanie Gritzman. Uh, Grit singer. Sorry. Yes. Love her. Love her. Love her. Love her. Um, Travis Green. Mm, love him. That's my bro. I love Travis. <laughs> love. Love. Um, Todd Delaney. Yes. He, that's also my bro. Uh, love him. Especially like this, the script, when he started doing the scripture thing, I said, oh, this is a guy after my own heart. Um, yes. Oh my gosh. This is harder than what I thought it was going to be. I thought I had a down pack. Oh my exactly. gosh. William McDowell. I yes. have to. Yes. I have to. He has to have a spot. Oh my gosh. That's four. Let me have one more. Oh my gosh. Um Kimberly Joy. There we go. Oh. I have to. I have to. I can't leave you out. I called you the voice <laughs> of our generation. I dare not say your name. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for putting Please me on the out. Listen, her her handle is up here somewhere. Check out her page. First off, I mean, this when this is posted, she'll probably have like five other videos posted by then. But at the time that this is recorded, she posted her worshiping. She had, I think she has on a jean jacket or a long shirt or something. She has braids. Oh, guys, go watch it. Go, go. She was yelling at the people, but it was like a good yell. It was yeah. so, it was so good. So a lot good. of my videos are me yelling. No. <laughs> That is her worship man, style. But you brought up so many people. And I just got to throw a couple more people on there. Yeah. Rich Tolbert Jr. I love you. Rich. Oh, yes. yes that's yes, that's yes, my bro. But yes, I just yes. love JJ Harrison. There's so yes. many amazing it's um, worshipers. So many. It's so There's many. There's so many amazing. And then I love one Kim more Walker. I love Kim Walker. Love Kim Walker. I've loved love Kim Walker. Walker. I should have said Jesus culture because then that puts a whole bunch of people in yes. like Hillsong <laughs> worship. That just puts a whole bunch of people like Hills. Come on. There's so many Hillsong <laughs> songs that should have been on my worship list. But I have to say this one person, and a lot of people might not know him unless you're old school, Ron Cannoli. Yes, now, I Ron Cannoli is like the architect of praise and worship. And you need, if you don't know him, it's, it's old school, but you need to go back and watch it. You need to go back and and, and, and listen to it. I used to have this VHS tape of one of his VHS. albums. Had, if you guys don't know what that is, I'll insert a picture so you can <laughs> see what it looks like. Because I'm pretty sure younger generation does not know. <laughs> yeah, so Ron Canoli, that's oh my god. Oh. So y'all y'all need to it's so many. Know. Which is small word. Like, how could you there's there's so many people? Oh, We're the gonna Hawkins be here all day. family. Oh we're gonna be here all day. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right. 13. Has there ever been a time? You wanted to give up. Give up. If so, what caused you not to? Mm. I want to give up about five times a week. <laughs> no, but um, there had been a time where I really wanted to give up. Um, I talk about this often. Um, and as we're filming this, it's mental health awareness. Yes. Um, so I dealt with depression for years, depression and anxiety. And at the darkest moments of that, I'm thank God I'm being treated and I, you know, I'm, I'm on the other side of it. But at the darkest moments of that, um, yes, I want to give up. Uh, there, there's this thing about not feeling like you have enough to give and so you don't want to give anything else, you know? Yeah. There's this, um, there's, 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 there's even this like insecurity where like, I'm not enough. Or I don't know enough or I can't do enough. But what pulled me out of that place was worship. I remember being in a really dark place and I cried out to God. I was like, God, I don't know if I can take anymore. It was a long time ago. I was in college, sitting on the floor of my college apartment. I was like, God, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And um, I was praying and I was crying and nothing really seemed to be pulling me out of that place. Mm. And I'd happened to have some music on 
And yeah, this was a while ago because I was listening to Kiara Sheard's free album. And that, I should put her on the list. Yeah. And the song Free came on. And um, mentally, you've captured me in my heart. Or in my mind, I am free. In my heart, if I am yours, I am free. And she sang that over and over again. And as she sang that, I felt like she was singing it over me. Wow. And I really felt myself literally come back to life by being in worship, being in the presence of God. I say it all the time. That song literally saved my life. Literally. I would not be here if God hadn't allowed her to use that song in that moment to pull me out of that dark space. Absolutely. Wow. So, that, that song is powerful. If you guys don't know that song, Go check that out. That the wording alone, right? The mm-hmm. wording alone. Oh, these songwriters, but that is that's amazing. That is amazing. Yes, as yeah. we are filming this, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, I am a overcomer and a conqueror also of depression mm-hmm. and suicidal thoughts. So yeah. I can attest to that, that both how God used music and worship and him, his word. Yes. Um, to just really speak and speak over. Um, everyone on this channel already knows, like I am not against uh, therapy. Um, initially, when I was going through it, I did not. Um, but I am an advocate. Jesus and therapy, praise God. Listen, I love my therapist. She's amazing. <laughs> and I, it's really helped me. Yes, Listen, like, Jesus plus therapy. Yes. Don't talk to somebody. Don't talk to somebody. <laughs> Please. Other than your past and your mama and them, okay. Listen, um, and they're Christian therapists. My therapist is a believer, and so she's a black woman and she's a believer. So it's oh, just, you don't have to send that info over. I got you. I got you. All I right, got some resources. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but um, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, okay, you, I kind of know the answer to this already. But question number fourteen: Do you view this as more of a hobby or a lifestyle? Oh. Worship is my life. This is my life. It's a lifestyle and it can't be a hobby. You can't vacation here. You can't. It's not the same. Oh my God. Did y'all hear the country accent come out? <laughs> oh, did you hear? <laughs> can't vacation here. <laughs> yes. Well, and that's so funny because I'm really from Connecticut, born and raised. Like, they ain't nothing. <laughs> People say it all the time. But um, I, I just think, I don't know, there's some flavor to it. So that's just how I talk. Yes. But, you can't vacation here you can't like it's <laughs> it's got to be it's all or nothing it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle and I couldn't come out of it if I wanted to yeah everything is worship I've sung secular music and been like hallelujah at the end you know what that don't go but my heart was in worship I'm singing a love song and I'm thinking about the Lord okay you know God has been so oh hallelujah it's it's a lifestyle it's in there <laughs> Listen, y'all heard it here first. You, this cannot be a hobby. So if you, Kim won't say it, but I will. If you are leading worship and this is a hobby for you, you are looking for your next gig. You are reaching out to churches to just do the thing. Don't sit down. Sit down. Have several seats because it can't. Oh. We don't need it. We don't just do covers on YouTube. We don't you know, need it. <laughs> yeah, the, we don't need any more hobbyists. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to say this. Like, no, and every worship leader doesn't have to be a worship artist. And, you know, I'm not saying, you know, that. And I'm not saying, like, you, listen, you could be, you could be, I believe this, you could be somebody who's a secular artist. But when you come to church, you're about worship. Right? It, does, it doesn't mean that it's a hobby, but worship needs to be your lifestyle. It has to be. It has to be yes. because how can you lead me to where God is if you don't know where He's at? That you only pick you only picked up to talk to Him on the drive to church. It don't work on the drive to church. Or you only picked up to talk to Him when it's time for you to leave. Nah, this can't be a hobby. I worship God in everything. I worship Him when I'm driving and I find a good parking space because it's in me, and I pray for Him too. And God answers those little prayers. Lord, let me find a parking space right up front. Okay. Hallelujah. Lord, you are wonderful and you're worthy to be praised. And I'm not saying that to be deep. Like, I'm real chill. 
Oh, oh listen, God. don't get me started with that. This culture of deep ministry, cut it. Please no. cut that. I it don't is walk around deep. like it, that's it's a lifestyle. We are supposed to be like that. We are yes. supposed to give God listen. thanks for those things. That's not deep. No, the word says that. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. No, I don't walk around talking about, yes, hello, hi, I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> no, no. But I thank God in the small things and I worship him in the little things. I give him praise and worship when I'm going through and I just need that pick me up or I just need to touch the hem of his garment, right? I need yes. to get closer to him. Like the worship is not just found on Sunday mornings. It's not just found at the church. I worship him in my house when I'm cleaning up because God is that good. Yes. God yes. is that good. Definitely is. Listen, also to the congregation, don't work, wait till Sunday morning for your praise and worship leader to leave you somewhere. It should come in expectation. It makes the encounter that much more uh, thick and, and like, you know, like you're expecting God to do something and he will do it. Mm-hmm. Just come waiting. Sometimes you miss it because you be waiting for the wrong thing. You, you weren't ready. You weren't in position. What's the word say? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. You walked yeah. in with the praise on your lips. You walked in with worship in your heart. You walk in ready. Mm-hmm. Come in ready. And then we can really move. I love when I come into this space where the atmosphere is already set. Yes. I don't have to start and build. I don't have to build an altar, right? The altar is already set. The atmosphere is set. And so now we can go build up on that. Yes. That's the yes. most beautiful thing. Ah, make the worship leader's job easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, last question. Question number 15. What tips can you give anyone who wants to become a worship leader? Yeah. Um, If it's on your heart to become a worship leader, um, the first tip I will say is to pray about it. Pray and seek God about um, this this call that you feel so compelled to do. Because like I said before, we just said it's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle and requires a lot of sacrifice. And so pray and then really seek God about that. Um, Then the second thing I will say is really hone in on your gift. You know, if you're somebody that sings, take a voice lesson get a vocal coach, make sure that you're doing everything to the best of your ability. So you don't have to worry so much about whether or not I sound good It'll become muscle memory and you'll be good at what you do. And we want to give God our best. Yes. Um, the, the next thing I'll say is watch some worship leaders, you know, learn, learn by watching, go on YouTube and watch Steffi Brett singer and, 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 and watch Tasha Cobbs and watch Todd Delaney and watch Travis Green and, and watch their live videos, not just listen to their songs, but watch these live videos and, 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 and take notes, you know, on how they move and how they sing and how they um, interact with the people because you have to be able to get their attention before you can point it to God. You know what I mean? Um, that's definitely very much a thing. And then um, I'll say stay in God's word and really stay in worship mode if you want to be a worship leader. You need to know what it looks like. You need to know how to get there. It's like asking for directions. Um, we're leading the people to where God is. We're leading the people to the feet of Jesus. You need to know how to get there. You need to know how to get there in, in your kitchen. You need to know how to get there in your little prayer class. You need to know how to get there on your own. So you can lead them there. And, you know, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's a learning experience and nobody is perfect. I've been doing this, like I said, for a decade and I make mistakes all the time. I forget words. I, I flub up what I'm, even my little practice, um, like things in between, even when there's a prophetic word, sometimes my mouth doesn't go what God is saying. I blah, blah, blah. Like, it doesn't <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I didn't do my little voice exercises before. You know what I mean? It's so, not so much about perfection, it's about intent. It's about intent. Um, so absolutely, so check your heart, um, find out why you want to be a worship leader and study. Find out what worship is. Take a worship course. There's so many beautiful mm. books um, that were written about worship um, and, and read on it. Get to know, really get to know what it is that you're trying to do. And I really believe that um, you'll be in a good space and God will take you the rest of the way. Oh my goodness, guys, listen, this has been a time, okay? We done had (laughs) worship seminar, church, 
<laughs> Sermonic selection. We done had it all. Um, but Kimberly, thank you so much for this was it was so much information, so much information from a perspective um, that I don't think a lot of people really get to see. Most of the time when they see a worship yeah. leader is on a Sunday morning up singing. Right. Uh, so to really be able to uh, like dive into these questions. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so Thank much. You. Our time is spent, y'all. We was we talked about it being short and that, that did not happen. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that did not happen. But um, thank you. Um, I'm going to have Kimberly's all of her information, single, all of that stuff in the description box. So please make sure that you click, you go follow her, you download, you stream, you do all the things. Um, and when she gets more information about other stuff, I will just add it in the description so you guys can just have access to it, no matter when it comes out, what, what happens. Um, but we appreciate you, Kimberly, so much for answering our questions, our 15 questions today. Is there anything else you have to say before we go? Um, no, um, all I have to say is um, make sure you follow me on social media. Not not because I need more followers, but <laughs> so you can just see what I have going on. Um, um, thank God that things are starting to open back up. And so, um, and I hope you're vaccinated, even if you're not, I hope you're staying safe. Um, and, you know, we can get together again. And so um, check out my socials um, so you can see what's happening. Um, check it out because I will be talking about that worship um, seminar really, really soon as soon as we get all the details um, put together. Um, check it out, check it out, check it out. And thank you so much, Danye, for having me. Of course, of course. Guys, I'm so excited, but we, we didn't talk enough. But as I say to you all, all the time, make sure that you are living in purpose on purpose. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>